Hey what's up guys welcome to another video in which we are going to learn about polymorphism in java programming so polymorphism is an important concept of object oriented programming it simply means more than one form so guys this is the only definition that you should know that is it simply means more than one form so anything that you can represent in more than one form it is known as polymorphism in java so basically polymorphism in java allows us to create a single method that will behave differently for different class objects Objects. So guys these we have seen previously as well in our examples the polymorphism property in Java can be achieved in the following ways that is one of the ways is method overriding that we had already seen in the inheritance video the second one is the method overloading wherein we will have the same method name but the return type or the number of parameters can be different and then the third one is the operator overloading that we will see with the help of examples in this video so guys let us check all these three three ways of achieving polymorphism in java programming with the help of examples so let me just move to this eclipse ide so over here the very first thing that we are going to see is method overriding so in this case we have to create the parent and child classes so the very first thing that we create is a parent class so we have class and then we have animal so inside this animal class let us say we have a string that is name and then we have a display name method as well so we have void display name as the method name and inside this what we are going to do is we will just display the name of the animal so let me just put the print statement over here so we have print statement name of animal is and then we have the name variable over here so guys this is one of the classes that we have created now we'll create another class so let's say one of the animals is dog over here and then to inherit the properties of this parent class we have to extend this animal class over here so we use the extends keyword in order to inherit the parent class followed by the name of the parent class now guys what will happen is both these fields and methods will be automatically inherited inside this dog class but in this case we want to do method overriding which means we want to keep the same name that is display name but we want to implement it in some other way so what i will do is i will just copy this display name method and paste this over here inside this dog class but over here we will just change the string to name of dog so we have name of dog is and then the name attribute will be accessed which got inherited from the animal parent class now guys let us create an object of this dog class now in the main method so we have dog class followed by dog object it is equal to new dog now guys we can access this name field as well and also the display name so when we are accessing the display name the display name of this dog class will be accessed that is because of the method overriding so the child classes method is preferred over the parents classes method so let us check this with the help of example over here so we have dog object so the very first thing that we are going to do is first of all we will set the name of the dog so dog object dot name it is equal to let's say the name of the dog is puppy and then we have to access the display name method so we have dog object dot display name so guys as you can see we have first set the name of the dog that is equal to puppy and then we are calling the display name so over here this display name that is name of dog is should get printed over here so i'll just save this file and try running this code so as we can see name of dog is puppy is getting printed so guys this is because of the method overriding and we have also achieved polymorphism over here that's because we have kept the same method names whereas we are accessing this method over here that's because it is the method that is belonging to a child class now guys what if this display name was not present so i'll just comment out these lines over here so i have just commented out this line and let me just save this file and try running this code to see what happens so guys since we have not provided display name in the child class but display name is present in the parent class which got inherited in the child class so 
name of animal is puppy is getting printed so this line that is name of animal is is getting printed over here which means a display name of animal is getting printed so guys this is not a part of a polymorphism since this display name was automatically inherited into the dog class with the help of this extends animal polymorphism can only be achieved when we have multiple methods with the same name and those are implemented in a different way now guys let us move to another example over here there is something called as method overloading so i'll just remove these lines of course that is the classes that we have created also i'll remove the content of this main method now guys in method overloading we will have the same method name multiple times with their different implementations so let's say we have the int return type for a particular function and we have sum of numbers so guys this function is going to add the numbers that we are going to pass to these methods so over here what we will do is in this method we will have two numbers that is int a and int b over here and what we will do is we will just return the addition of two numbers that is a and b so we have return a plus b as the expression over here now guys there is a red underline over here that's because we have not provided this method inside a class so i'll just cut this from here and paste this inside this class that is already present that is java test class now guys similarly we will have another method so i'll just copy this and paste this over here but this time we will have int sum of numbers we will have three parameters so we will have a third parameter that is int c and over here i will have a plus b plus c now guys as you can notice over here we have sum of numbers two times that is over here we have one function we have the same function over here second time as well but the only difference is we have three parameters over here whereas two parameters over here now how do we call the sum of numbers so let us move to our main method over here what we will have is let's say we have another variable that is int sum it is equal to we will call this method guys that is sum of numbers so i'll just paste this over here and then let's say we provide Provide two parameters. So let's say we have four comma five, and now we have a semicolon over here. And then, guys, we will print the sum variable in order to check what is the output. That is, what will be the sum of the numbers. So we have over here sum of numbers is, and then we have sum. So guys, we are getting an error over here. It says cannot make a static reference to the non static method sum of numbers so guys we are trying to access a non static method over here from the static main method so what we will do is we will just provide this suggestion over here change sum of numbers to static so i have made it as static over here and similarly we have to make the other one as static as well but guys we are not getting any error that's because during compilation it is checking which method is being accessed so guys this method is not being accessed yet that's because we have only provided two parameters over here and this method is where we wanted the correction to happen so guys let me just save this file and try running this code now so as we can see sum of numbers is 9 so basically what is happening is the sum of numbers this function is getting called and then we are passing the two parameters so over here the control flow will check whether this sum of numbers is getting matched with the number of parameters that is being passed to this method and yes in this case so it is returning a plus b which is 4 plus 5 it is equal to 9 so 9 is getting assigned to this sum so this sum is getting printed over here as we can see sum of numbers is 9 now guys let's say we have three parameters over here instead of just two so i will just provide another parameter comma 6 over here so as you can see again we are getting an error it says cannot make a static reference to the non static method sum of numbers so guys this proves that over here this sum of numbers is trying to access this sum of numbers that's because the number of parameters is getting matched over here so what i will have to do is i will just have to provide a static keyword in order to remove this error so now as you can see there is no red underline so there is no error as such so i'll just save this file and try running this code now so it will be 4 plus 5 plus 6 so as you can see sum of numbers is 15 so these three parameters that is 4 5 and 6 is getting passed over here as a b and c and all these numbers are getting added and it is returned that is the sum is getting returned to this sum variable and this sum variable is getting printed then so sum of numbers is 15 and guys in this way we can achieve polymorphism with the help of these method overloading wherein the method names are same but the 
parameters can be different and sometimes the return types can also be different so the control flow will automatically match the correct method which is matching with the number of parameters and the type of parameters as well now guys let us move to another example over here we have the third example of polymorphism that is operator overloading so in this case i'll just remove this existing lines of codes over here that is the two methods that we have created now guys we have a simple operator that is addition so we have a plus operator so let us say we have two integers that is int a it is equal to 10 and we have another integer that is int b it is equal to 20 what we will do is we will have another variable which is going to have the sum of these two numbers so int sum it is equal to a plus b so what this will do is it will take the value of a and it will take the value of b and this plus operator is going to add both the values and assign the total value to the variable sum and then we can have the print statement that is sum is and then we have sum over here so guys let me just save this file and try running this code now so as we can see sum is 30 that's because we have added two numbers that is 10 and 20 now guys the plus operator can be used in order to concatenate two strings that means joining two strings so guys instead of having int over here let's say we have a string so let's say string a it is equal to so what i will do is i will have a string over here that is java and over here let's say we have another string that is string b it is equal to over here what we will put programming so we are going to add both these strings so after java we are just going to keep space so that both the words are separated by a space character after we concatenate them now guys what we can have is the third variable over here which was sum we can keep it as string data type and then let's say we have a string variable name so i'm just going to change the variable name to str that is string so now guys what is happening is we have a it is equal to java and b it is equal to programming and what we are doing over here is we are not changing this expression which we used in order to add two numbers previously so we are keeping this expression same that is a plus b but the values of a and b have been changed that is a is equal to java b is equal to programming and both are getting concatenated now and it is getting stored in the str so over here in the print statement we will just change this label to string is and then the name of the variable that is str so guys let me just save this file and try running this code so as we can see string is java programming so guys over here plus operator is being used in order to concatenate two strings over here and guys this is called operator overloading so it depends on the operands that is the values of a and b if you provide them as numbers so the plus operator will help you to find the sum of the numbers and if you provide the string then the plus operator will be used in order to concatenate that is join these two strings so a followed by b so as you can see this is what happened over here that is java programming both the words were concatenated and joined with each other similarly you can check the functionality of the other operators as well where they can be used in order to do some different tasks hopefully you have got enough knowledge about the polymorphism using these three methods to achieve polymorphism in java guys the aim of the polymorphism is to create a consistent and clean code so basically we are using the same method names but with different parameters or the same operator but with different operands in order to perform some similar task so this makes our code clean and consistent as well so guys please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well the next video that we are going to talk about is multiple inheritance java programming so stay tuned